I'm Barbara. Welcome to Mess to Yes. Today we're going to take an IKEA cube table based on the original design by Milo Boffman. He was a very famous modern furniture designer and you will see cube tables everywhere, especially if you look in design magazines today, but they're all based on his original design. So we're going to steal the cube table base from Ikea and remake it into something fun with a geometric mosaic top. The way it comes, it's the Ikea PS 2012 table and it comes with this weird kind of rack that's in the middle and a plastic top. We're going to toss those and I cut a wood top for it. It is possible that you could make this using the plastic top, but I'm going to be putting a specialty coating on it and you just never know how plastic's going to react with other chemicals, so I tossed it. What I'm going to be doing is taking some marbled scrapbook paper and cutting it into a geometric design based on a quilting pattern and then covering it with a high gloss epoxy. Epoxy is a very thick, glossy finish that's equivalent to like 50 coats of varnish. At least that's what their marketing says on the box, and I've used it before. It's a really great heart surface, and it will make our marble design pop on top. So, first thing we're going to do is get rid of the plastic, and I'll show you how we started on the wood top. So the paper I'm using is this blue marbleized. This would also be fantastic with a green malachite, but I was not able to find that just at my little local Michaels. I cut it on an angle like you can see here because I wanted the pattern to be straight on the pieces. So I have three different kinds of pieces. I have squares, diamonds, and triangles. And I am going to put the exact pattern for these and sizes on our blog. So like always, go to the blog to find out the information. Be sure you subscribe over there so you get the exact measurements and list. I went through and cut narrow strips, how wide I wanted my diamonds. And then I cut them on an angle. And that way I could just, and you can cut two or three strips at a time. You can also, of course, just do this with scissors, but it's easier if you happen to have one of these because they're all going to be consistent. Borrow one from a friend who likes to scrapbook. Once you have all the pieces that you need, and you're only going to need a couple of triangles, again, you'll see that on the pattern, we're going to move over to how I place them on the plywood. Now you are looking at the underside because the other side I've already glued everything into place. So this looks a little rougher than I wouldn't want this on my finished table. First thing you're going to do is measure it into quadrants. And you're going to find your center line both this way and in this direction. And then you're going to draw lines. This is going to help you when you're laying your pieces of paper on here to make sure that your pattern doesn't go askew and end up crooked with different amounts of differences around the edges. I see geometrics everywhere right now. Chevrons have been the big pattern for a long time. But geometrics are in all the fresh and new columns in your magazines. They're all over at market. Geometrics are going to be a fantastic look. So this would be a great way to add one to your home for a low cost. So I'm starting with just an old kind of quilting pattern, putting the diamonds into a star shape in the middle. Now, I'm just laying these out for you to see when I, once I get these laid out, I'll, I'll put a Mod Podge down and put, install one of the squares so you can see how I did it. First thing I did is I laid out all the pieces without any kind of glue, the entire top of the table, so that I knew I had what I needed and that the pattern would work. And I recommend you do that as well. These are not perfect squares because I like 
the dimension that you get by having larger and smaller um, spaces in between of the gold showing. Now, if you're gonna go to the trouble to make sure that the marble is one direction, then lay it out the right way, not the way I just did right there. Make sure that they're all pointing towards the middle. So once I did all that, then I went back and I left them in place and I started, I actually started from the center you, know, you can start wherever you feel comfortable. But I just did a small section at a time. I just laid the Mod Podge down. I wanted to make sure and get, oops, get all the corners. But it doesn't have to be perfect because we're putting a heavy duty layer of the um, epoxy over the top. That is what's gonna make this paper be able to be a surface that you can put glasses on, books on, use it as a real serviceable side table. So you're gonna do that all the way around. I would start at the center, just so you don't have an issue. This is painted, and I'm also painting my base with Design Master Gold Metal. There are a number of gold and metallic spray paints out there. I like how this one looks. I actually read a blog on Little Green Notebook where she tested a ton of different gold spray paints. And this one had the look I like best. And she actually preferred it too, which is always good to know. All right, so now I could wiggle my nose like I'm bewitched, but I'll just show you my secret. I have already done the whole thing. So here it is laid out. You can see the star in the center, and then the squares, and then more diamonds. And the triangles are only used on the very edge. I think it looks really fun and chic. It's gonna be a nice accent piece, but it's also not an expensive top. And so I can switch it out at any point for a different design. So our last phase is we are going to put the epoxy on this and then that has to dry for a couple of days. Okay, so our epoxy is the next step once we have the top done. I've taken the cube table off, I've spray painted it gold to dry, and now I'm gonna make the top coat. Epoxy is basically a resin and a hardener, and you have to mix it equal parts. It's gonna have fumes, so do it where you have some ventilation. Our studio is actually out into our garage, so we have lots of ventilation out here. You're gonna want something disposable to mix it in. Not, this is not flimsy, this is actually pretty heavy duty. And something disposable to mix it with. And then you're going to spread it. They suggest spreading it using stiff paper. Notice I have gloves on because I don't wanna get any of this on my skin. You're gonna do it slowly. I'm actually gonna do a half of a batch first and make sure it works well. Let that completely dry and then do a second one. If I can't get the entire coverage, then I'll quickly mix the rest of it and pour the entire thing all at once. Let's just do that first and then I'll talk about what the next step is. So I'm gonna put half of each bottle in here. You're going to find bubbles as we mix it. I can already smell the fumes. If I start talking silly, that could be why. Then again, I kind of always talk silly, so what are you gonna do? Okay, now let's try and put equal parts and a little bit more. Oh no, I'm getting it on my work table. Don't do that. I'll put that on top of the paper for now. This stuff is meant to be permanent and it really truly is, so be careful with it. There's also a note on the instructions that if you leave it in your mixing container and don't use it right away, it'll actually become hot and hard really quickly. And this stuff is not inexpensive, so you do not want to waste it. Okay, so now we mix and then we pour. You know, I did this in college, as far back as college, for sorority house clipboards of all the silly things. Everybody put pictures of all their friends and then put epoxy over the top of it to make a surface to write on. Could be a cute gift. 
for your daughter and her friends. Make them little matching clipboards for school. All right, so I'm going to start in the center. It says to pour evenly. Now, I remember from college that this is going to goo and ooze off the edges as it self levels. So I am not actually going to leave it here on top of this cardboard box. I'm just putting it here to just to show it to you. I have some cans of paint set up on top of a piece of or on top of a trash bag actually so that this can sit and dry and the sides can ooze off. I'm going to use my stirrer. Seems better than a now the directions also say not to do more than an eighth of an inch at a time. So if you're trying to do a really thick coated surface, like I, you know, they show this on top of furniture. I'm not sure I'd want to do it on a countertop. It will yellow slightly whatever you're using. So my blue paper is going to look a little greener under the yellow. So consider that when you're choosing your colors. So if you're choosing like a rusty orange, it's going to look oranger. Just know that that's going to happen. I think this would be really cool with a black background as well. But in the particular place where I want to put it next to a blue leather wingback chair that has gold studs. And so the gold with the blue marbled paper is going to be a fantastic accent piece to make what could be kind of an old fashioned wingback chair look a little more modern. When things are changing in fashion magazines, I'm sorry, design magazines, but they sell you things just like fashion magazines, you don't have to replace your big pieces of furniture. Mix them with really cool new accent pieces and create a whole new vignette. It'll give some new life to your room, all right, so this is looking like it's going to cover. I'm afraid to put this down anywhere, to be honest with you. So I'm just going to keep coding and making this thing. Now what's going to happen next is the bubbles. Now I didn't get a lot of bubbles, which I'm really happy about. Hopefully that didn't mean I did not mix it well enough. Um, the bubbles that are in here, and there are a few, are going to rise to the surface within five to ten minutes. So you're gonna to have to babysit this a little bit. And what they recommend is just gently blowing on the air bubbles. You can see I'm really working to get this to be everywhere because I don't necessarily have to do a second coat if I can get it to be completely even everywhere. But you don't want any place that's unfinished or uncoated because then the paper will be ruined from underneath. All right, so I can already see some bubbles starting to rise. So I never finished that thought. What you're gonna need to do is blow on the bubbles gently. They also say, you know, you can use a propane torch. So if you happen to have a propane torch laying around and you're not afraid of burning your house down, feel free to harden it with a propane torch. I'm thinking breathing on it gently could be the um, less violent way to get rid of the bubbles. All right, so here I see some bubbles. Yeah, and they just pop. It's perfect. So I'm going to be here babysitting this. I'm going to move it over so it can sit there for a couple of days, put my glass down on something plastic. When it's all finished, I'm going to attach this to the edges of the cube table and put it into place. We'll see how it turns out. Thank you.